uh, the next book I read was um, quite a quick one. I think I read it in less than an hour. I saw it in um, there's a uh, there's a bookshop um, in Exeter called uh, the Book Cycle, and it's basically a bookshop where you just go in and you can take any three books and you can pay whatever you would like for them. I saw this in the window. Um, Weird Things Customers Say in Bookshops by Jen Campbell and I have been watching Jen Campbell's videos for a very long time now. I absolutely love her, I've heard a lot about her books that she's written but I've never actually read them and so I saw this one and I went oh, I want it and I read it and it's very very quick read. It's a lovely uh, coffee table book I think. Um, it's, it's definitely a good book to give to somebody who is a book lover or has worked in a bookshop or spends a lot of time in bookshops like I've never worked in a bookshop but I spend enough time in bookshops and overhearing interesting conversations to know that a lot of these things are so very true um, I really loved the amount of Harry Potter references as well definitely uh, appreciated that so it's really really difficult to write a book like this so I've just plonked it in the middle and thought it's a good book I enjoyed it I would give it as a gift I will definitely keep hold of it the next two ah! Um, I re started rereading the Harry Potter and I managed to reread uh, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone and Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets uh, this month and I love them. Oh, it's so wonderful going back, to, back into that world and there's so many things that I've just been amazed at rereading. Like I already knew, like the first one, because I think I read it so many times, this was a book I reread over and over and over and over again when I was a child more than the others. I didn't often just carry on reading through the series, I would just reread one book over and over and over again. And it was usually this one in Prisoner of Azkaban. And so much was so wonderfully familiar and comfortable and I could just read it and switch off because it was all already there in my head. I, I practically knew this book word for word and that surprised me because I've not read it in 10 years. And oh, I love the characters and I love, there's so many different things that I was just amazed at. Like, how does JK Rowling render such amazing, fantastical, brilliant ideas and places and scenes and magic without really describing anything at all? I'm just, I was like, amazing. And it really reminded me of something I think is a C.S. Lewis quote. Um, from when he was talking about how he'd written uh, the Narnia series where he didn't really use a lot of description and somebody wanted to know why because such fantastical things like in Harry Potter and he said that it was because children's imagination was so much better than anything he could write and they would fill in the gaps and it would be perfect just because of that or something similar but it really struck me that J.K. Rowling had totally taken that advice almost and just ran with it and to such amazing standard as well. Um, Chamber of Secrets, I think I realised there's a lot of plot holes in this book. Um, been wonderful to return to this series. I'm just starting um, Prisoner of Azkaban, which <laughs> amused me in this one. So we have several pages of basically being told the story of Philosopher's Stone about what happened and how Harry is a wizard and he doesn't like holiday and he lives with the Dursleys. Last year he fought the wizard who killed his parents and all these secrets and things but in The Prisoner of Azkaban uh, J.K. Rowling just gets all that over with in one paragraph and then moves on with the story and you can totally tell she was so bored by this point of, of like maybe publishers saying oh you need to make sure you refresh everybody on what's already happened. I'm definitely glad that I don't have to reread a whole summary of what's already happened for book three and I'm so looking forward to meeting Sirius. Oh I love Sirius and Lupin and just ah uh, everybody. The next book that I read was one that I picked up for, more for my birthday and it's the Brownstones Mythical Collection Arthur and the Golden Rope by Joe Todd Stanton and this is beautiful. This is a picture book slash graphic novel I think and this is the end papers and aren't they just beautiful? Um, it's about this guy who looks after the Brownstone family vault and he tells the story of one of the first of his ancestors. Arthur is a little boy who lives in Iceland and his town has this giant fire that keeps away the monsters and one day it's knocked over by this giant uh, wolf Fenrir who is actually on the cover. I did when I picked this up think that was a snake, it's actually a wolf. Um, so Arthur is sent on an adventure to go and find somebody who will help them get rid of this wolf and relight their fire. It features several uh, Norse gods and heroes and it's, it's just so beautiful, so beautiful and I think it'd be a great book um, for a gift for any kind of um, any age kid 
especially I think kids who aren't too keen on reading, don't want to be patronised maybe because this is such a beautiful book but it's so accessible and almost grown up at the same time. So, oh, a giant cat! <laughs> so, uh, it's a really wonderful book, I really really enjoyed it, I think I gave it four stars in the end and that was only because I think I wanted a little bit more depth for Arthur because um, he's supposed to be this big hero but um, we don't really get to know him or see much of his personality or uh, any character development. I think he didn't really learn anything I don't think and I would have liked to have seen that but I'm hoping we will see him again in one of the other stories perhaps. I've already pre-ordered uh, the second book. I think it comes out the same day as Book of Dust so it might be a book I get to near the end of the month because the Book of Dust is going to take over my life when that arrives I think. Um, I also forgot um, a book that I read um, sent to me from NetGalley called A Jigsaw of Fire and Stars by Yabba Bado and this has one of the most beautiful covers I've seen in a long time I'll stick it up here or here or somewhere. It's about a girl called Sante who has been brought up in a travelling uh, circus. It's less of the kind of circus that you immediately imagine when you say the word circus and more of a circus that's like a pop-up street performance kind of thing. Um, there's little bits of magic but they're not really explored and we didn't get to see a lot of the circus which was quite disappointing because that was the main reason I requested it in the first place was because um, I'm currently writing a novel set in the circus and I, just, I really love circus books. Books set in circuses are wonderful, I love them. And this book I felt was, I think this needed a bit more time in the editing phase, uh, it was a bit messy. There's another book that I think thought it was more clever than it was really. So it begins with Sante uh, having a dream about being saved from a ship by being put in a chest of jewels in the ocean. Um, so suspending my disbelief immediately that a chest of jewels wouldn't just sink, everything we kind of get from this dream scene ends up being true because why would... It, it, everything just felt very very obvious I think. Every little revelation along the way we'd not even really guessed, we'd already been told in some way, it's just that characters hadn't put it together and that got quite annoying in the end I think because it, it was just like they were constantly behind the reader um, and it was almost patronising I think especially if this, uh, this is where I'm unsure if it's children's or why the main reason I think this should be more YA is because a big part of the plot is actually about taking down a sex trafficking ring. Um, it's not really explored in any detail what that really means, but uh, there's a character who I think is quite poorly represented who's been a victim of that. What I did like was the ambition um, of the book. I think it was very, very different. Um, it brought in a lot of different cultures and places. Most of the book was set in um, an area of rural Spain, which was really quite interesting because I don't think I've actually read a book set in Spain like that, especially not a YA book or children's book, whichever. Um, so that was really cool and I liked um, the range of diversity in the characters. My main issue with that was how they were represented, I think was done very poorly. Um, there's two members of the circus who are uh, named Redwood and Midget Man and there's one point in the book where Sante and her friends are actually shocked that Midget Man has a real name and it's like would you would you really grow up with someone calling them Midget Man? It, I, I don't know. There was a lot of other things like that as well where a lot of derogatory terms were used in very inappropriate ways I think and I think that needed to be picked up by an editor so I just think this was quite a poorly executed book. Um, the writing style was also quite clunky in places. It's one of those books that I'm just not really sure about, so I gave it three stars and just went, okay, it, it's, it's good, but it's also quite bad in a lot of ways. And I think definitely the representation of some of the people were, was particularly bad. So my camera stopped filming. So uh, I just had like a 20 minute rant about this book and none of it filmed at all. So this might be a shorter version of that rant. And it's uh, The Lost Boy by Christina Henry. And this was one of the books I hauled a couple weeks ago. I only really got it because I was curious. I'm, I'm a big fan of Peter Pan and um, I really enjoy reading uh, sequels, prequels, retellings, uh, all sorts of different stuff about Peter Pan because I'm just endlessly fascinated by the entire concept. 
and this one I think I was a little bit wary of anyway because it's YA and I struggle a lot with YA, especially YA fantasy. So this book was in a lot of ways exactly what I thought it would be and in a lot of ways a lot worse. I expected I think this to be more about the relationship between Peter and Jamie who is um, uh, Jane, who is James Hook, uh, Captain Hook as a lost boy. And I expected it to be a lot more about their relationship, maybe a little bit of romance, I wasn't sure. Um, but that was my kind of predict prediction. However, I wasn't. That wasn't really what it was about at all. I didn't really see any relationship between Peter and Jamie whatsoever. Even the beginning, we are when we are told over and over again that Jamie loves Peter and they're best friends and he's the first and all this. We never see any kind of positive relationship, any fun, any joking, anything at all between them. I think. This is supposed to be a dark retelling. It's supposed to be um, a Peter Pan that gives you chills, um, deeply unsettling, complex characterization, dark and deeply disturbing. I don't think it didn't give me chills because it didn't feel realistic. It, the only darkness in this book is the sheer amount of violence. And the violence is just, it's just endless. It's mostly to no purpose. It's just, pff, the way it was explored was awful, I think, because it, there was no kind of depth of character. We didn't really understand any of the, the motivations behind Peter or any of the other boys. A lot of these boys, um, they come from uh, backgrounds of abuse where their parents have been beating them or they lived on the streets and had to fight for all their food, for where they sleep, everything. And they hated it. And they came away with Peter to have fun and adventure and they come to Neverland and basically all they do is fight each other, beat each other up and kill each other. And I'm like, how is that in any way better than what you left behind? Like, at all. There, there is nothing about this book that makes Neverland seem like an attractive place. And I don't believe that darkness is the same thing as violence. Darkness, I think, comes from a deep place of character. It comes from emotion and motivations. And there was none of that. We didn't understand why anything. And all the way through this book is constant telling. It's constant summary. It's constant Jamie repeating himself over and over and over again about stuff we already know about Peter. Because if there's anything we know is that he's an awful person and he's killing people and it's all his fault. And like the mermaids are mentioned but they are never seen. The fairies are mentioned but basically not seen and there's just no magic there's no wonder there's no development and I think it was just appalling the only thing all the way through this book is just constant violence and constant death and it's wearing and it was depressing and miserable and maddening and I, the way there was no surprises there was no plot twists there was no cleverness there was nothing that was unsurprising there was just a nothing no imagination like it didn't really feel like Christina Henry had actually read the original series or any of the other adaptions that's this and how that's how that but it's just like it, there's no imagination behind it there's nothing I don't know it just didn't feel very inspired it didn't feel very developed it didn't feel like Christina Henry particularly cared about any of her characters to any extent to really get to know them I have so many issues with this book, but mostly it was just so maddening and so depressing. And <sighs> so I'm done with this book. Two stars. Do not really recommend unless you're very into YA because it'd probably be right up your street then. Um, but yeah, not for me. Not for people I think who are interested in um, Peter Pan as uh, an exploration because I don't. Even, I'm not even sure that Christine Henry's read the original to be honest. But yeah, so while well, that book kind of ruined my month, I think, I've dipped back into Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban and I'm really loving that. And I'm looking forward to um, October. I'm hoping to participate in uh, Mercy's Autumn Readathon. I'm still undecided about what books I'm going to be reading for it though, so I will update later. I'm also planning on doing non fiction November because my uh, resolution at the beginning of the year to read more non fiction has really not gone well. So I've got uh, several piles up here 
of non-fiction I will be reading for non-fiction November and I'll make a video at some point with a list of those that I'm hoping to get to and we'll see how it goes. How did your September go? Did you um, read anything especially amazing? Did you have any uh, bad experiences like I did? Um, I'd love to hear from you and I hope you're all having a wonderful autumn. Happy reading, goodbye.